All right, this is the video that shows you how to do V5 test bed exercise two. The first thing you'll need to do is go to either the module section or the assignment section and find the assignment that says V5 test bed exercise two. So I'm going to click on that and open it up. All right, so it has the directions here. We want, uh, we're going to use the bump switch today. That's the one with the button on top. It says after the bump switch is pressed, motor one runs at 60% velocity and the LED turns on. Step two, after the bump switch is pressed again, motor one stops, motor two starts, also at 60% velocity. The LED stays on, so we're not gonna do anything to the LED. Number three, after the bump switch is pressed a third time, motor two stops and the LED turns off. So we've got some new controls here that you're going to have to learn, and that is how to turn the LED on and off, and how to make the, um, bump switch active. So we're gonna go over here to our code, and the first thing we need to do is put in our motors. I showed you how to do this yesterday, so if you don't remember, you can follow along here, or you can go back and review the video from yesterday if you need a step-by-step -step explanation. Okay, now we're going to add in our LED light, which is, you have to scroll down to the bottom and find three wire. That means it's one of the older uh, pieces of equipment. And then we want LED, and our LED is plugged into C, or at least mine is, hopefully yours is as well. And then the bump switch also is under three wire, so we go down here to three wire. We find the uh, bumper right here, and my bumper is plugged into A, and now I am all set with my devices. All right, so how do we use the bump switch? How do we tell the robot to wait for the bump switch? So you're going to head over here to the sensing part. Is that right? It's been a little bit. Um, yeah. So you scroll down here a little ways, and you'll want to find this one right here, bumper A pressed. Okay, that's how we tell it to wait for the bump switch. If you have more than one bumper, you can find the other choices if you click this little drop down menu. All right, so if we take this and we try and put it into our code, you can see that it's not going to join to the code. All right, see how it doesn't have the little space on top that would join into that piece right there? So we need to put this inside of something. So we actually use this control block here and we want to use the weight, but we need to find, notice how this has triangle on the end here, triangle on the left, triangle on the right. That means we need to find one that has a, white, a space here with triangles on the left and right. So there's a few here. You can do while. If you do while, that means it will only happen while the button is being pressed. So that means we'd have to hold the button down. We don't want that. We want to do wait until, um, yeah, that's the one we want, wait until. So we want wait until, we join that to our code, and then we take bumper A pressed, and if you slide it here to the side, see how that little hexagon turns white? That means it's accepting it, and we can put that in there. So the, the robot is going to wait until the bumper is pressed before it does anything. Okay, so the bumper is pressed. Motor one runs at 60% velocity and the LED turns on. Well, I've already shown you how to make motor one run and I've shown you how to set the velocity. So I'm just gonna show you how to turn the LED on. So if we go back here, you'll want to find, um, let me think here. Been a little while since I've done this. Well, oh, here it is. It's in the purple section. Looks. Find it right here. Set LED on. So if we connect that here, then that means it's going to turn the LED on. If I want to turn it off, then I would just take that off right there. That would turn it on and off immediately, right back to back. You wouldn't even notice it turned on if you did it this way because it's not waiting at all. All right, 
So you're going to use the wait until bumper is pressed, and then you're going to uh, spin your motor forward. And we need to set the velocity. And I believe it said 60. All right, so the bumper is going to be pressed. Motor is going to turn to 60% velocity and start spinning, and the LED will turn on. Now here's what you're going to notice uh, when we're using the bump switch and the limit switch. They are older pieces of technology and when you go to press them, sometimes the newer brain reads the block so quickly that it will actually read some of them. It looks like it's reading them at the same time. In other words, if I had another uh, wait until here, I skipped a step here. I'm getting probably confusing you. So if I put a wait until here, and then I put bumper is pressed, and then I make the motor one stop, the bumper will go so fast it almost reads these at the exact same time. And so it'll turn on and off right away, and it will look like your code's not working because you won't. it goes so quickly that the motors won't even move, and you'll think, well, my code's not working. What's going on? And the problem is that when you press the button or the limit switch, it as it's going down, it'll like go on, off, on, off sometimes really quickly in succession. And so the ro the brain is able to read through this code so fast that it can read all of those and it just blitzes right through the code. So what we have to do is we have to slow this down just a little bit. So anytime you do a wait until bumper is pressed, you want to wait. And I always change it to something really short. I'm going to use 0 0.2 seconds here. And you have to do it every single time you do the limit switch or bumper switch. Otherwise, uh, like I said, sometimes it'll go right through your code so fast that it'll look like it's not even working. So um, I'm going to turn my brain on and connect it to my computer. Those of you with eagle eyes may have noticed that my brain icon is not green because it was not plugged into my computer. All right, so now it is plugged in. I can download this code. I am not going to save it. And I'm going to download it. Oh, I already did download it. So now I'm gonna click run and see. My motor should run, my LED will turn on, and then my motor will stop. So I run it. And then students will say, but Mr. Reese, my robot's not doing anything. It's not working. Well, why isn't it working? Because we said, you don't do anything until we press the button. So it's not going to do anything because you haven't pressed the button yet. So I'm going to press the button. And now it's running. Well, it's not stopping, Mr. Reese. Why isn't it stopping? Well, because you said you're going to wait until the bumper is pressed again to make it stop. So I'm going to press it again. And it stopped. And if I want to turn the LED off, I would use this right here. Download that. I'm going to go ahead and save my code to my H drive. Now on my, oops, on my H drive, it says my name because I'm a staff member. On yours, it will say your student ID number. Click this little arrow here. Oh, wait, that's not the way to do it. Sorry. If you can't find your H drive, you have to click the little arrow next to this PC. And then it should pop up right here, your student ID number, H colon at the end. That's the one you want. Okay, this is exercise two. So I'm going to say test bed X. Actually, I'm not even going to put in exercise. Test bed two and save it. All right, now I'm going to run it and press my button, and my wheel is going. Press it again. My wheel stopped. My light turned off. Now, this isn't the actual code. 
this is just letting you know how to get started with the code. You're going to have to go back to your assignment here. Number two says, after the bump switch is pressed again, motor one stops and motor two starts. And the LED should stay on, so I don't want this here. But I do need to start motor two. And I need to put that code in there. And then I need to put in another wait until bumpers pressed with this short wait time here. And then I make motor two stop and turn the LED off. So you'll have to add that part of code yourself because I've already shown you how to do that in exercise one video. If you don't remember how to do those commands, you need to go back and look at the exercise one video. All right, so when you're done, and you have your code set to do all three of these things, then raise your hand and let me know so I can give you credit.